Grab onto your kettle, hand on top of hand, swing side to side, twisting side to side. Making sure you got headlights right on those hips there. Those headlights are facing me, they're facing forward. Now let's speed it up a little bit. Up, breaking. Now don't release. One thing you don't want to do is release and go all the way around. Protecting the back, but using that core. And now let's shift it side to side, but do it. One, two, three. One, two, and hold. One, two, and hold. Hup, two, and hold. One, two, and hold. Two, boom, and hold. Side to side. Side, side, and hold. Could do this all day. I love it. But you only have two more. Last one. Okay, you ready to take it down the mat? So grab yourself a mat if you're not on a carpet and let's take it down. Okay, let's do our mat work now. So take your kettle, turn it upside down, grab the neck, and now bring it close to your chest. And what I want you to do is roll down just to the top of your tailbone and then press back up. Roll it down to the top of the tailbone and press back up. So I'm gonna give you a couple different levels when it comes to this exercise. You can continue right here if this feels comfortable, or you can take it a little bit further down and roll all the way down to the mid back and up. Now notice the kettlebell assists you coming back up. So take it mid back and come all the way up. Mid back and round one vertebrae at a time all the way and then round back down. It's a rounding action using your abdominals. Take it up and all the way down. Give me four more like this. Extend it out. Last two. Now here's the most advanced. You're gonna take it all the way down. Your shoulders are gonna to touch all the way down and all the way back up. Round it down and take it back up. Again, the kettlebell helps you get back up again. But I really want you to use those abdominals. And let's even slow it down a little bit. Up and round it, slow it back down. Take it up. Last two. And last one all the way up. And now let's round it all the way back down again. And now what I want you to practice is maintaining your shoulders as you take your arms away from your body. So what I want you to do is think about your rib cage right here. Your arms drop behind you, but the main thing is you do not want to arch up. You make sure the rib cage is knitted close, abs engaged as you bring it back up. So keep it engaged. And as you do that, you really have to use the core so you don't release. Here we go. And depending on how flexible you are, you can drop it a little further back. The further you go, the more you have to engage. So with that in mind, now let's bring it up and just go to a crunch and then take it over. So we pull over and crunch up and pull over and crunch it up and reach to the ceiling. Give me four more like that. You can extend that pullover, but make sure you don't release the rib cage. Last two. Let's keep this going. More advanced now is go right between your legs and reach it up and then come down and over and reach it up and roll it down. Arms go over, reach up, down and over. Reach it up and down and over and reach up. And now for the most advanced, I want you to take it down, come up and reach to the ceiling. And take it over and reach it up and reach up. Each time going a little higher, reaching through, taking it up. So just give me four more like that. Anytime you feel like you want to come back to those regular crunches, you have that option. Or you can even rest for a couple and then come back when you feel like it. Last two, and last one. Round it all the way back down. Okay, now that we've used the upper part of the body, let's use the legs and practice our stabilization. So with the lower part of the body, give me a 90 degree angle right here. So with this 90 degree angle, what I want you to think about is pressing onto those legs and press toward your body as you push away. And feel the lower abdominals, feel it engaged right there, the lower part of your abdominals. Now, again, without arching your back, making sure you're glued down, imprinted on the mat, I want you to drop one foot down and then the other. 
as if you're dipping your feet in water. So we're just not going like this. You're hinging at the hips, boom, and boom. And the hard part is not to release the back, especially when we try to go with two legs. Now here's the real challenge. Two legs, and all of a sudden, you wanna make sure there's no space there, okay? You wanna try combining those two? So let's pick up our bell again. And now, as we, our legs go down one at a time, our arms go back, and back, and back, and just stabilize. And when you feel comfortable, let's try both legs. Here we go. Both legs down and up. Only do this if you feel like you're not arching your back. As soon as you feel an arch start to happen, then I need you to go back to that single leg. Okay, how about two more? Now we're just gonna make the lever a little longer, meaning the legs are gonna get a little longer, and we're gonna take them kind of a bent leg position. So again, drop them down and up. Now again, you might only take it a few inches away from your body like this. The more advanced you are, you're gonna take it down and up, and down and up. And eventually you can straighten out your legs but only go to this motion when you feel comfortable. Otherwise, it's a couple inches out, a couple inches in. Out and in, and out, and each time, just crank it and hold it and knit that rib cage closed and make sure the abs are down and it's imprinted right here. Boom, and boom. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Four more, and three, and last two. This is it, last one. Good job.